In this lesson, we will start our discussion on functions in Lua. Functions provide the main mechanism for abstraction of statements and expressions in Lua. And uh, there can be two ways of calling a function. So one will be, uh, we call a function to carry out a specific task, which will not return any value, but carry out some specific task. And this is also called a procedure or subroutine in some other languages. And in this case, we will call function as statements. Whereas there can be other way of calling a function where it computes a value, does some mathematical calculation and returns a value. In this case, we will call a function as expression. For example, in this case, uh, this function uh, carry out some specific task of printing to the console. Whereas in this case, sign, it uh, calculates the sign and returns the value, similarly cos, and then uh, this expression is evaluated and assigned to A. So these are the different ways we can call it. Now let's see the syntax of calling a function. So first list of arguments enclosed in parenthesis. This denotes the call. So in this example, you see that print is a function. We have not defined it. It's already defined. And here we have passed two arguments. And these are enclosed in parenthesis. So this denotes the function call. So this is a call. So uh, param1, param2, and depending on how many parameters a function can take. And we will later see that we are not bound to exactly call that many parameters uh, uh, the way it was defined. We can add more or less parameters also, and Lua can handle that. So if the call has even no arguments, we still must write an empty list. So if a function f does not take any argument, then in order to call it, we need to pass an empty parenthesis. But there is a special case where uh, this is optional. So if the func function has a single argument, and that argument is either literal string or a table constructor, then the parentheses are optional. For example, in print, if you want to call with a string, then you can write print space hello world, which will be equivalent to writing print and within parentheses. And the next was table constructor. So you see a table constructor here, similarly a empty constructor in both cases. And f is a function, similarly type is a function here. So these are equivalent to enclosing them in parentheses. Uh, but it's better to add parentheses all the time just to avoid any confusion. And a Lua program can use functions defined both in Lua and in C or in any other programming languages by the host application. And we uh, generally write uh, lots of uh, functions in C due to performance reasons. And also uh, there are many more uh, operating system specific functions which are available in C but not directly in Lua. So we can uh, write functions using those in C and then call it from Lua. And another region has already told its performance. Now let's uh, see the final part, which is defining a function. So the any function consists of these three parts. One is the name. So this is the name. Then we have parameters. So in this case, this function takes two parameters. It can be different or it can be zero as well. And then the main body of the function where we write the actual logic. So, uh, and we can call a function with a number of arguments different from the number of parameters. So, uh, generally we, people mix the term, but uh, you write parameters while defining the function. So, these are the parameters. And when you call add, let's say 10 and 20. So, these are the arguments. So you can call a function with less than what it was defined. So it, it's expected to take two, but if you write one, then Lua will handle it. It will uh, add, it will treat it like this. So it will treat it like 10 comma nil. So if you call, provide less number of arguments, Lua will append nils in the end. If you provide more number of arguments, so if you write 10, 20, and 30, Lua will convert it to 
add 10, 20 and it will discard the extra parameters. So these are the two ways Lua will handle that. Now let's see example of whatever we have learned so that uh, we get an idea of how to define a function. So our function is add which will take two parameters a and b and we should end the body of function with end and then uh, let's define a local variable sum and initialize it with 0 and then we will write sum equal to a plus b and then we will return the sum. So this is a very simple function and in the end we will call the function. So let's run it and you see that it calculates 5 plus 10 is 15. Uh, now to illustrate the point that you can add even less parameters or more parameters. So first let's take the example of more arguments 5, 10, 20, 30. So I said that in case of extra arguments it will discard the extra arguments from the end. So you see still it's 15 and now let's see the case of less arguments. So let's say we don't pass uh, this but in this case we need to uh, make our code in such a way that it handles such cases and uh, we also call uh, that as default parameters. So if, if somebody the client code does not pass a value to, to a particular uh, parameter you should add default values. In some function it will not error out. For example in the case of print, uh, let's take the example of that as well. So what this function does is it just prints the two values and does nothing. Okay, so unexpected symbol, uh, this is not the way to comment in Lua. So you see, uh, in the first case it prints 5 and nil because it treated b as nil. Then uh, we passed 1, 2, so it printed 1, 2. Then we passed 1, 2, 3, 4, but it expects only 2, so it will discard 3 and 4 and just print 1, 2. Now let's look at our default parameters because uh, sometimes you may uh, need to define default values for the parameters. Uh, in this simple case, it was not required because uh, if uh, uh, it's nil, then also uh, it's printed. But in this case, add function, if b is nil, that is user has passed less parameters, then if you try to add nil to an integer, it will throw an error. So let's see an example of this. And let's comment out this function. We don't need it. So you see it's fine but if you uncomment this where we are passing less parameters we get an error. So we need to handle that case. So we can write it as a and a or 0. So this we have already seen that if first expression evaluates to true then it will take this one. If it evaluates to false then anything after or. We had already seen in our previous lecture. If you don't remember it, uh, please watch that video again. And similarly for B. Now if any of one or both of these values are absent, it will take as 0. And now let's run that code again. So you see here 5 is passed but B is not passed. 
so it uh, treats b as 0 and it will add 5 plus 0 a is present so it will take the value of a in this case both are present so 15 in this case it both are present and it will discard the extra value so again 15 and also for the sake of completeness add 0 parameters so we don't pass anything in this case both a and b are 0 and the sum should be 0 so that was uh, a brief introduction to functions we will continue our discussion on functions in the further videos